Hey there, friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Jewelry Resellers Podcast. My name is Desiree, and I am your jewelry reselling bestie. On today's episode, we're going to talk about 15 of the most challenging, probably the most difficult aspects of being a jewelry reseller or having a jewelry resale business. Now, I have touched on some of the things we're going to talk about today in previous episodes of the podcast, but I thought it would be a good idea to really kind of become aware of all the things that could trip us up as it relates to our jewelry reselling business. And then I'm also going to discuss ways that we can navigate through some of these challenges and also how we can overcome a lot of these challenges because uh, there, there's some things that we have to be really clear and focused on when it comes to being a jewelry reselling business owner, depending on how we do that, where we do that. And so I really want us to concentrate on the solutions, even though I'm going to be talking about the problems or, like I said, the challenges. Um, really, the goal of this particular episode is for us to be solution oriented and to really be proactive in creating or designing the type of jewelry reselling business that we want or that is going to meet our goals and help us, you know, have the business that we desire to have. OK, so that's that's what we're going to talk about today. And. I'm kind of nervous about it because when I was thinking about everything on the list, you know, when I was preparing for this episode, there were some things that I actually forgot about. And then I remembered <laughs> a couple days later. And so I threw those things on the list and I'm hoping this doesn't like turn people off from wanting to do this because you can have a very successful jewelry reselling business. I've done it. I know people who do it and who have been doing it for years, people who are way more successful than me, and they have figured out how to make this work. OK, so again, that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we get into that, you know, I always like to remind you to head on over to the website, which is JewelryResellersPodcast.com, because over there you're going to find uh, all the past episodes of the podcast, and you can also join our, our newsletter. And when you do that, you will be able to access an instant download of a list of the 20 best-selling vintage jewelry brands that I believe all resellers should know. And I've talked about this before. This has come from my own experience as well as my own research, and also just being very familiar with the jewelry resale market and paying attention to trends, popularity, and, th and things that are in demand both now and in the future. Okay, so uh, all you have to do, like I said, is head on over to jewelryresellerspodcast.com and you can grab a copy of that list. All right, so let me go ahead and pull up my notes because you guys know I will, <laughs> I will uh, get really off track and distracted if I don't have my notes in front of me. All right, so we are talking about some of the worst and I hate to say worse, like I said, because it sounds so negative, but um, I guess we could say the most difficult challenges as it relates to being a jewelry reseller. Now, I have my list in front of me, and these are in no particular order. These are things that just came to my head as I was, you know, kind of brain dumping this topic because I know like all of these challenges I have not had and maybe some I've had, you've had, and maybe some you've had, I haven't had. But across the board, I think a lot of us have dealt with some of these frustrations, okay? So the first one we're going to talk about is inventory management. Now, when it comes to having a jewelry reselling business, you know that the inventory pretty much is the lifeblood of your business. Without the jewelry, you basically have no business because you have nothing to sell, you have nothing to showcase, and you have nothing to service your customers or your buyers with. But the tricky part about inventory is, and I'm gonna talk about this, is um, you know finding the stuff that we wanna sell. And, Surprisingly, a lot of jewelry resellers deal with having too much jewelry, right? We've all seen the people who have bins and bins and boxes and drawers and <laughs> bags, whatever, full of jewelry that they have not even gone through, uh, let alone, you know, 
have sold in any way. So there is the risk of overstocking. That's one aspect of inventory management. There's also the lack of storage space. Now, I know a lot of us get into this because jewelry is kind of small, at least, you know, individually the pieces are. But when you have thousands upon thousands or hundreds even of jewelry pieces, then space can become an issue, especially if you don't live in a large home or you don't have a storage unit or a spare bedroom or whatever the case may be. Now, the other thing about jewelry is it tends to be a very slow moving item. Jewelry does not have a very fast sell through rate. Now, there are some pieces that will sell very quickly. I'm not going to say that that you know, there isn't that. But for the most part, jewelry is not something that turns over quickly, which is why so many of us have so many listings. And it's why a lot of us try to be very knowledgeable about what's in demand, what's popular, what's trending, and what buyers are looking for. But in general, jewelry is not a fast seller. OK, and, um, you know, of course, depending on where you are in your business and um, what type of uh, clientele you have built up, what type of reputation, what type of brand you have as it relates to your jewelry reselling business that may not necessarily be true for you. Um, and also a lot of times jewelry is very seasonal. You know, it's, it's, you're going to make more sales on Valentine's day, on mother's day, Christmas and things like that. But for for the most part, in general, jewelry does not move very quickly. Okay. And that can become a challenge for a lot of people. All right, challenge number two is pricing. Um, we've talked about how jewelry reselling is becoming more and more saturated because so many of us love it and um, it's just fun and pretty. And, you know, we love all of those aspects and qualities as it relates to this business. But there is competition out there. You know, we're not going to be naive and think that there isn't. But remember, we're not all selling the same thing. We're not all building the same type of business. We all have different branding and different customers that we serve. So that is one way that you can kind of navigate through this is by really making yourself stand out in some way. Now, we also want to look at or consider a valuation of jewelry. You know, I've seen prices that are kind of crazy in the sense where they're way overpriced. Either someone didn't do their research or something is way underpriced and uh, someone will snatch it up <laughs> and then turn around and flip it, you know, and sell it for a more competitive price, I guess. But uh, again, this takes time to learn. So the way you're going to navigate through that is to be knowledgeable and to research as much as you can. Uh, finally, we do have fluctuating prices as it relates to the jewelry market. Now, this is more so in our higher end uh, jewelry pieces, you know, the fluctuating uh, prices of gold, silver, uh, also gemstones, diamonds and platinum and things like that. So depending on uh, what the market value is for certain types of jewelry pieces, that can uh, either directly or indirectly affect your pricing. All right. So again, you're going to need to know the market and you're going to need to know your buyer. And speaking about buyers, let's talk about challenge number three, and that is customers, clients, buyers. All right. So a lot of people get nervous about the returns, refunds <laughs> as it relates to uh, selling jewelry. And for the most part, I haven't really dealt with too much of that. Now, of course, I have had my share and I've had my share of difficult customers and difficult buyers. But luckily, that's not like an everyday occurrence, okay? And it's not something that I think you have to worry about too much if you are going to be doing this business. Um, as long as you are honest and you are a credible seller, depending on where you sell, um, I think that you can navigate this particular challenge fairly well, all right? And I, would, I, I wouldn't worry too much about customers, you know, being difficult and having that be a reason why you don't pursue this business if this is something that you really are interested in doing. Now, the other aspect is um, a lot of people worry about getting scammed, you know, buyers uh, buying a very high end piece of jewelry and then maybe uh, doing a charge back or returning it, trying to get a refund. And then they do the old switcheroo, which I know a lot of us are familiar with. And that does happen. That does happen. Um, 
So I guess you're just going to have to really figure out what your tolerance level is as it relates to that. And is that something that you can manage and that you can handle? And like I said, it doesn't happen all the time. And depending on what platform you're selling on, uh, the platform does have some things in place to kind of help you, you know, help prevent that. And um, again, uh, but, you know, you're going to have to really think about what your tolerance level is. And if that's something that really, really worries you, then maybe maybe this isn't the business for you. All right, let's talk about challenge number four, and that's sourcing quality items. Now, I have done numerous podcast episodes on this. Um, finding genuine pieces, uh, the cost of buying, you know, your cost of goods, depending on what your budget is as it relates to that. Um, and then having a steady supply of jewelry, because even though it does not sell quickly, you are going to be constantly turning over your inventory, at least hopefully so. And so you want to have a constant influx of new or different jewelry inventory that you can showcase and that you can market and that you can promote to your buyers. All right. Now, I talked about um, on one podcast episode how to create a sourcing routine that will help you figure all of this out. Like I broke it down and I will uh, link that episode somewhere on the screen if you're watching this on YouTube. And then if you're listening to this, um, I will have a link to that podcast episode in the show notes. OK, but I really talk about how to navigate this particular challenge. And like I said, I go into great details in that episode. All right. We kind of touched on challenge number five, which is competition. You know, there is saturation in the jewelry reselling market. Everybody is doing it. And um, again, I think you can really navigate this by building your own brand and building your own loyal customer base. Now, this will take time. This is not something that you're going to do like really quickly, but it is something where um, you can have some very loyal buyers who will always show up whenever you have, you know, a sale or a live show or you have new listings. Um, I have buyers that have been with me for years and they are always, always ready <laughs> to see what new pieces I have, you know, either in a show or in a listing. OK, so uh, that one, even though it is a challenge, I think it's a challenge that can definitely be overcome. All right. Challenge number six is shipping risks. All right. Worrying about your jewelry pieces getting lost or damaged, you know, in transit. Um, some people worry about international shipping. Again, depending on what platform you're selling on, that may or may not be an issue. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. And then we talked about returns, you know, as it relates to uh, shipping or jewelry or whatever the case may be. Um, again, I don't think that's something too like too scary to worry about or too scary to think about. But again, that, you know, this can happen in any business, not necessarily just jewelry reselling. I mean, you always run the risk of your items getting lost or damaged or whatever the case may be. But again, I think that's a really easy challenge to navigate. All right. Challenge number seven is time consuming. Now, this is probably the one thing that I hear jewelry resellers Complain about the most, and maybe I shouldn't say complain, but maybe, exp you know, express the most frustration with, because this is a time, a time <laughs> consuming business and each aspect of the business, you're going to have to invest some time, right? Because it's going to take you time to find the jewelry pieces, to source the jewelry pieces that you are looking, you know, you are looking for. Then it's going to take time to research the jewelry if, if you don't know exactly what all you have, or you may have to research pricing in some way. Um, you will also have to take time to photograph and list and describe your jewelry pieces. You know, and again, if you don't know what you have, that's going to take some research time. Okay. And then uh, the packing and the shipping and then taking it to the post office or wherever to ship the jewelry out. So there's a lot of timing as it relates to being a jewelry reseller. 
All right, but all of this can be very, very streamlined if you have a really solid system in place. Okay, so if you have a system for sourcing, if you have a system for listing or selling rather, and if you have a system for shipping, because those are the three big areas that we've broken down in previous episodes as it relates to a jewelry reselling business. Remember, there's three components. There is the sourcing, there is the selling, and then there is the shipping, all right? And when you have systems for each of those components of your business, you can really um, narrow down the time it takes for you to do each of these parts of your business, okay? And you can you can batch list, you can batch photograph, you can source, um, you know, a lot of jewelry pieces that could take you uh, through the month or maybe several months so you don't have to do it every week or whatever, you know, so there are ways to streamline this. Okay. So again, it's going to be unique to you and your business, but remember if you can figure out a way to cut, you know, cut down on the time, uh, this is probably not a very big challenge that you have to worry about. All right. Challenge number eight is fraud and scams. Again, I've also done a a uh, podcast episode on how to protect yourself and your jewelry from getting scammed. And um, that was one of the earlier episodes. I can't remember what number it was, but I go into a lot of detail on how to protect yourself from getting scammed. All right. Because we've all heard stories of fake buyers, scammers out there, you know, posing as one thing and, and doing something else. And then we've also dealt with payment fraud. Um, like I talked about earlier, where people will pay for something and then immediately request a refund after you've already shipped the piece out, you know, and then there's also selling counterfeit or maybe buying counterfeit jewelry. And you do that unknowingly. And that's something that you have to be very careful of because you don't want to get caught in a situation where someone's accusing you of selling something fake or um, you get penalized or fined or, you know, whatever. Uh, for selling something fake. So again, these are things that can easily be um, navigated if you are knowledgeable and if you take the necessary precautions ahead of time to minimize this particular risk. All right, let's talk about challenge number nine, and that is maintaining a reputation, building a brand. So depending on what type of jewelry reseller you are. Now there's jewelry resellers who you will never see see their face. You will never know their name because they sell on platforms such as eBay and it's pretty anonymous there. And so they don't do anything other than sell on eBay, promote on eBay, and that's all they do. And you will never know who those people are. But then there's jewelry resellers like me who like to be out and engaged <laughs> with my customers and with my buyers. Also, that's just my personality. I consider myself uh, pretty outgoing and um, I'm really like I really enjoy building a brand and I enjoy social media and like I said, connecting with customers and buyers, but that's not everybody. All right. And it doesn't matter. You can really make this work either way, whether you want to be seen or if you don't want to be seen. All right. One of my early mentors, um, she said that that's why she loves selling jewelry on eBay because she doesn't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> right. So um, and me, on the other hand, I prefer to talk to as many people as possible, which is why I love to do live selling so much. But again, you know, you can figure out what's going to work for you. Neither neither way is right or wrong. Neither one is good or bad. It's just what works for you, what works for your personality and what is going to work for your particular business. All right. So um, the other thing you want to think about, too, is. Um, and this really scares a lot of people, but it's getting negative feedback on platforms like eBay um, and Etsy, you know, because sometimes the feedback could, you know, it, it's I don't want to say it can ruin your business, but it kind of takes the wind out of your sales a little bit. I know when I got my first negative, I was devastated because I felt like, you know, I had done everything right. And, uh, you know, it's something that we have no control over. But I'm here to tell you that you can have a very successful business with a couple of negative feedbacks or a couple of negative reviews. Now, of course, you don't want to get a ton of them. 
But one negative review or one negative feedback is not going to sink your entire business. I can tell you that. And most buyers, um, they know that there's difficult, <laughs> there's, there's difficult customers out there. And so usually I have, I have seen personally that most people are willing to excuse one or two negative reviews. It's not going to deter them from shopping from you or with you uh, if you have something that they actually, you know, really want. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Okay, so next up we have fluctuating trends. Now this isn't something necessarily to worry about or to be afraid of, but I know a lot of people don't like to keep up with this stuff. A lot of people don't like to pay attention to what's popular, what's trendy, what's in demand. And you don't really have to be. However, it will only help you if you are, okay? So uh, you don't need to get overwhelmed and study all of the fashion reports and, and magazines and social media, but just being familiar with what's going on right now. So in my notes, I have fashion changes. Now remember, jewelry pretty much is parallel to fashion. And so a lot of the jewelry trends will tie in with fashion trends. So if you just kind of keep an eye on that, you will know what's popular as it relates to jewelry because it'll be popular as it relates to fashion and accessories and things like that. Uh, the other thing you want to pay attention to, and I talked about this earlier, is seasonal demands, all right? We talked about that um, some of the most popular times when you will make jewelry sales will be Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, and Christmas, and sometimes uh, certain occasions too, like weddings, graduations, you know, that type of thing. Um, but again, you need to pay attention to those seasonal changes, and that's an easy way to navigate this particular challenge. And then um, finally, I have adapting to new markets. In other words, staying current with changing tastes and preferences. Uh, of what our buyers are looking for. Like some people are really into uh, sustainable and ethical jewelry now. Some people are really into um, handmade jewelry, right? So again, whatever you, know, whatever you can keep up with, it will only benefit you to do so because it will make you that much more, um, give you that much more of an edge as a seller. All right, challenge number 11 is legal and compliance issues. Now, I don't think a lot of us are going to have to worry too much about this particular uh, challenge, but um, hallmarks, uh, certifications, <laughs> again, this kind of goes back to like um, authenticating jewelry because in some, in some cases you may need certifications in order to do that. Also, depending on your town, your county or your state, you may have to have a license or a permit. I know that um, in some parts of the country, if you're going to do online auctions, I think you have to have a auctioneer's license. I don't think that's everywhere. I think that's only in certain states. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it. But again, you want to be familiar with what is required in your particular town or city or state, whatever. Uh, so you are in compliance with whatever the laws are as it relates to selling jewelry. Now, I also did an episode talking about um, illegal jewelry. And so you want to be aware that you are not selling anything that falls under that category. All right. And if you didn't see that episode, uh, again, um, I will put a link to that uh either here in the video <laughs> or in the description and show notes for you. All right, so um, legal compliance issues, like I said, I don't think this is too much that we have to worry about. However, we do wanna make sure we are running a legal business in whatever way that entails as it relates to the requirements of where we live. Okay, number 12, uh, this is a challenge and I kind of touched on it earlier. It's marketing and visibility, also uh, branding. Uh, this is something I really enjoy because that's just kind of been my thing <laughs> for the past few years. Even before I was a jewelry reseller, I was a digital, um, a digital content manager for a media company. And so this is just kind of my jam. This is the things I, I love to do um, as it relates to social media, branding, and all of the things that go along with it. But I understand that's not everybody's thing. But the thing is, is if you are willing to brand yourself in some way, that's going to make you stand out from the competition. And it's also going to attract 
the specific buyers that you are looking for, right? If you want to be known as somebody who sells high-end luxury jewelry, then you want to make sure you are branding yourself as such. If you want to be someone who sells mostly um, vintage costume jewelry, again, you want to make sure your branding matches that particular uh, niche or category. All right. And um, I know a lot of us, though, we tend to like um, selling everything. That's kind of like what I do. I sell pretty much everything, whatever <laughs> I can find, whatever I think will be profitable for me. But I have noticed just within probably the last nine months that um, when I do vintage jewelry, that seems to be kind of more of what people are looking for. So I'm kind of steering my branding in that way, kind of, sort of. So again, that's going to determine, you know, what, um, <clears throat> like what works for you and what works for your business. Okay. So just something to think about. All right. So we are on challenge number 13 and that's expert knowledge requirement. Now I'm not saying you have to be a jewelry expert, but you do need to know more <laughs> than the average person because people are going to ask you questions. They're going to ask you questions about, oh, what is this? Who makes this? What era is this from? You know, stuff like that. And so you want to have more than a basic knowledge as it relates to jewelry, because again, this is only going to help you. I'm not saying you have to be the expert and know everything about everything, but you do need to have more than a basic knowledge. And this will take time to develop, okay? But you can do it. There's so many resources out there nowadays from YouTube videos, Facebook groups, books, um, libraries. There's even museums now dedicated to jewelry. So there's so many ways that you can learn. Uh, take your time. Don't get too overwhelmed. But like I said, the more you know, the more sales you will make just because people will trust you and they are going to know that you know <laughs> what you're selling and you will be able to help them find exactly what it is that they're looking for. All right. Now, the other thing is um, you want to make sure you, you have a basic knowledge of gemstones, uh, precious and semi-precious, and um, also metals. We talked about that, you know, gold, silver, platinum, whatever else. I don't know what else there is, copper, <laughs> whatever. Um, you know, so you understand, you know, metals, gemstones, and that type of thing, okay? Because like I said, it will only help you. All right, challenge number 14. This is a big one. I see a lot of people dealing with this at some point in their business, and that is emotional attachment to your jewelry, especially if you're selling things from your own personal collection. Maybe it was handed down to you, you know, from a family member. Maybe it's just jewelry you've bought over the years and, you know, you want to sell it, but at the same time, you still really love it. All right. Emotional attachment to inventory. Sometimes sellers can become attached to unique pieces and find it hard to part with them. Now, I'm guilty of this, too. As a matter of fact, I have uh, I want to say at least 20 to, <laughs> to 40 pieces that I know I need to sell, but I don't want to sell them because I love them so much. But, you know, sometimes it's hard to part with some of those pieces. All right. So this this can be tricky. And I don't really know if there's an easy way to navigate this. But um yeah, it's just one of those things that you're going to have to eventually move past, right? If if you can move past it. Um, the other emotional ups and downs as it relates to being a jewelry reseller is dealing with customer complaints. Like I talked about earlier, sometimes that can really, really be discouraging. And sometimes uh, it can even be depressing. I've talked to resellers who's who, who get very depressed when, when something negative happens or if... Uh, you know, they get a big return on something that they were really excited about, you know, and uh, that is hard, you know, and, and it's part of um, really learning how to not not take things personal as it relates to your jewelry reselling business. And I know that's hard to do. Trust me, because I've been there. You know, I've been practically in tears one time when I had a customer uh really leave a nasty feedback. And I 
you know, it happens, but it, I can't say it didn't hurt because it did. All right. So that's just something we're going to have to work through and we're going to have to do our best to keep moving forward. Um, the other thing is slow periods. A lot of us get emotional when things are not popping off like we want them to, right? We've all had those moments where we don't make a sale for a day, a week, a month, several months, you know, and sometimes you're doing all the right things and it happens. It happens to all of us. And that can also be very emotional, especially when, you know, you need, you need to make sales because you need to make money. You need to pay bills. You need to take care of your family, whatever the case may be. All right. So you're going to have to figure out how to detach emotionally to the best of your ability and try your very best not to take these ups and downs and shifts in your business um, personally and, and not feel like you're doing something wrong or that you could have made the outcome different. In some cases you can, but in some cases you cannot. And we have to learn to accept that that's part of the reality of a jewelry reselling business. All right, finally, and this is probably the biggest challenge that a lot of jewelry resellers talk about, but it goes with the territory, and that is platform fees and overhead costs, right? So we all complain about, you know, the platforms charging the fees they do. However, it's the cost of doing business, right? I'm not saying I agree. I'm not saying I disagree with how much the platforms charge. But again, if we want to put our merchandise on their platform, we have to play by their rules. And that means uh, paying the fees that they require in order for us to do so. All right. So we've got marketplace fees selling on platforms like eBay, Etsy, or Poshmark comes with fees that do reduce your profit margin, okay? But again, that's just the cost of doing business. There's also payment processing fees, uh, depending on if you're not using a platform, you know, one of the reselling platforms, you still will have uh, payment processing fees if you use a credit card or accept a credit card, if you use payment processors like PayPal or Stripe or something like that. Um, that also is, you know, an expense you have to take into account. And then marketing costs, you know, if you want to promote your items or if you want to promote your jewelry reselling business, depending on how you do that, if you do that with paid ads, uh, either online, social media, or if you take out an ad, uh, let's say in your local newspaper, magazine, TV station, whatever the case may be. All right. But there are costs associated with all of that. All right, so we talked about 15 of the most um, difficult parts of running <laughs> a jewelry reselling business. And I talked about ways to navigate each of these challenges. Now, I know it's not easy and I know um, not all of these challenges are going to apply to all of us. But the thing is, is um, I like to say this is that knowledge is power. And the more you know, the more you can prepare or you can adapt to when these challenges pop up for you. Because sometimes things, you know, some of these challenges will happen in the beginning of your business. Some of these challenges will happen later on in your business. And maybe even as you uh, either upscale or downgrade your business in some way right? Because we're all at different stages as it relates to our individual jewelry reselling businesses. All right. So that is what I have for you today. And I would love to know your thoughts and your opinions about today's topic, about some of the most difficult, the most challenging aspects of being a jewelry reseller and having a jewelry reselling business. What do you think about my list? Uh, do you agree with everything that I talked about or did I miss something that maybe you're struggling with in your business and you would like to get maybe some feedback or advice on how you can navigate through that? I would love to know. So if you uh, have any input on this, please leave a comment on YouTube if you are watching this video podcast or leave it in a uh, comment on Spotify because I know they now have comments there as well. All right. So I want to thank you so much for spending this time with me. And again, if you would like to learn more about how to start, grow, and sustain a profitable jewelry reselling business, 
please visit the website and that's jewelryresellerspodcast.com. Again, that's jewelryresellerspodcast.com. Thanks so much. And I'll check in with you again really soon.